Well, tonight we're going to take you into a journey about really exploring what is another color option. Also looking at some of the new techniques and some of the new options that we have built into what is a lumen. Now, I want you all to join me in welcoming the person that really needs to tell you all about Illumin is Miss Michelle Parche. Michelle, thank you. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. You know, really, I look at it because I know that not only are you one of our North American art team members, you are a successful salon owner and spa, as well as accomplished, winning colorist into multiple competitions. I mean, really, that would be a whole other webcast by itself. Uh, thanks, John. No, I mean, really, bravo, big ups to that because it's amazing. I've always been a big fan of your work and what you do and put the magical unexpected placements together I think is really quite fantastic. So thank thank you. you. Thank you, John. So I know that everyone that is watching is really wanting to know about you, number one, and about your salon world, but also we're going to talk a little bit about your tools of Illumin in your photographic work. You know, because I know you're a big fan of Illumin. Oh, yeah, I'm obsessed with Illumin. I, I couldn't imagine not having Illumin in my toolkit. That's right. You know, and I know that some of the different options that we have, I think that they got the, everyone got to see the video. So they're looking at, oh, the new imagery, what is it? Oh, it's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. It and is. And it's not that Illumin has changed. It's just that we're providing you now with Illumin more options for your service for your service day. And you know, we're gonna talk tonight about some of the things that I know you and I were speaking about that you do in the salons, which is like in your blonde world. Yes, you, yes. With the, the color toning. Absolutely, Illumin is a wonderful tool for toning, and it's actually so nice because it really seals the hair after you've done your highlighting, so the hair has such a beautiful shine. Exactly, and you know, whenever you're looking at, I always look at what not only is the technology of Illumin, but what is the finish that it has. You know, I call it, it leaves that hair with that beautiful pixelated finish for me, that high shine. It is. I, I've always described it to uh, my students and to my clients as it's like a flashlight is within your hair shining outward. That's what Illumin does for me. That's right. You know, and it's really something that with Illumin, you know, having it that it is the translucent effect, but it also has durability. And you and I were having a great chat about this today that, you know, we have the options to create pures, but also there really are the lights and the deeps. There's no end to the options with Illumin. You can have very natural color tones with Illumin. That's right. You know, and I know just besides photographic work, every single day, if you're looking at just that finishing touch, you know, we have color ons for sure, but Illumin is allowing you to take your color work into a whole new place, giving you the highest shine. I mean, what canvas doesn't want that liquid luxury? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. It is luxury. 
Truly, and also, you know, whenever you're looking at all of the different, what are always called the fabrics of the hair, the different wools, the cottons, it gives that color, that, that pothole fill, mm -hmm. if you will, yep. that it just allows the hair to always look amazing. Well, it, it turns it into that glass surface, that's and right. that's where you get the reflection from. That's right. You know, and tell me a few other things. I know in your salon day, you and your team, in your service menu, what are some things that you love to do? I, we talked about quick, and we'll talk a little later about mm -hmm. it as well, about the toning with it. What are some other ways that you like to work Illumin into your day? Well, I mean, for me, Illumin, if, if I have a redhead or brunette, I love maintaining them with Illumin. Nothing is, is quite as spectacular and as shiny. Um, it's really wonderful for the creative coloring and for those who like to have fun. But Illumin is, is really good as a, uh, in between your foils, as a color balancing tool. You can use it for really anything. Um, and it's, it's something that my clients all expect now. And don't even get me started on the fun things you can do with Illumin. <laughs> with all the pures. That oh, absolutely. And even the muted pures, when you mix them with the other pigments, it's just beautiful. You know, looking at the possibilities of it, I know for my salon day, for any single thing, it's always about a piece of Illumin. And, you know, I love to shadow a blonde with it. Oh, yes. You know, yeah. my, one of the jokes is, especially when you have that high level 910 blonde and now they want to be blonder. Yes. <laughs> But with it, I think that if you look at, you know, the light strength, you know, the mm -hmm. light sitting next to the dark, it allows you to create either warm or cool luxury details. Dimension without darkening the hair. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. And it never creates that, that opaque uptake that no. sometimes can happen with other options on those, those canvases. I know. It's perfect. And it actually gives the hair a very even pigment to the That's hair. That's right. So, I know all of you are super excited, and um, remember that the chat log is open, right? So, if you have questions for myself, Michelle, for us, let's definitely explore it. But remember, get your Twitter fingers ready. We introduced this last time because we have a lot more fun to go along. So, I know, Michelle, we um, prepared some nice little hair candy for you guys. Yeah, we had fun today. We were playing. We were playing with our pigments. So, why don't we actually take a look at our first canvas, right? And then we'll take a little breakdown of her a little later. So, I believe we have Stephanie up first. Let's take a look at Stephanie. Now, we're here with Stephanie. And tell me, what's the first step? Well, our first step is to take a section in the back, apply our Silk Lift Strong to the regrowth area. Okay. And then we're going to take our board and apply Silk Lift Gentle to the pink band. And we're going to do that back to front. Perfect. And we're going to work her after we clean the section about to about a 910. Absolutely, John. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to let you have that and then we'll see what's next. Thank you. So we're back with Stephanie. So Michelle, what's next? Well, right now I'm going to be applying my background foundation to the undercut detail areas. All top chic. All top chic. Perfect. All right. Let you have at it, and then we'll go next. Okay, Michelle, so it's time to design. I love the section. A soft, curved crescent section that goes into a low shadow line. Absolutely, because I really want the detail to be more to one side of her head. So what I'm going nice. to do is begin with a slice, and I'm going to tap in my base color. Oh, is that turquoise I see? That's a little bit of the TQ. And then I'm going to be putting her detail color on the ends. Lovely. So more of like a soft kind of lilac, yes? Very, very soft lilac. I really want to uh, give her almost a, a really beautiful spring soft blend. Very nice. So then you're going to work this in a compact foil with mm -hmm. paper back to back, yeah? Absolutely. And I'm going to continue around right through the rest of my crescent. And as you go to the shadow line, it'll go even lower. Yes, it's it meant will, to disappear. It will, yes. It is meant to disappear. Once it gets to the back of her head, I didn't want it to stop on one side. I want it to sort of just Great. fade out. Perfect. All right, well, I'm going to let you have at it, and then you can tell us the next step. Awesome. All right. Okay, so what are these three tricky little numbers? Well, these are a little bit of a surprise detail that I'm putting in here, John. So Show they're going to be yellow. So what I'm going to be doing is tapping in. In love with yellow. Tapping in my base color again. That beautiful turquoise. Mm, love. Love the turquoise. And then I'm going to be bringing some yellow through. Ah, through just to kind of put a little unexpected yeah. flirt. And I'm going to turn my brush sideways just to diffuse it into the rest. Lovely. And then I'm going to be bringing down my next section right away. And now what's on the next section? The next section is going to be base. 
So I'm going to be doing again my turquoise at the roots. Mm -hmm. Tap, tap, tap. And then I'm going to be putting my, my uh, violet that is my based end tone. And then the third section. The third section is going to be going back again to the yellow. So turn my brush sideways. Diffuse the color through. Perfect. So three little sections. Three and little sections. Are. And these three little sections are going to have quite a bit of drama to our hair. I love that. Love it, love it, love it. All right. And then we only have one more step, right? And into then the after that, we only have one more step. All right. Well, perfect. I'll let you finish this up, and we'll get into the last component of it in just a sec. Okay, so the rest of the hair, what are we doing? So we are tapping in our turquoise to the roots, and then we are applying our SV at 10 to all of her ends. That's brilliant. I know you're going to be all super excited to see the result of Stephanie. Absolutely amazing. Michelle, this is stunning. Thank you, Don. Absolutely stunning. And guys, I don't even know that you can even see all of the beauty that's there. But here, look not only within the shape, the shine. Let me just spin around just a little bit so I can show just that little shadow line that you had done. Absolutely spectacular. And I love the unexpected little flirt of YY. Yeah, YY is kind of my thing, so I really like to use it, and it cut, it's such a nice accent. Exactly. And why not? Why not? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Let me just do just a spin. You can see, I love that you introduced the turquoise, and look at that SV at 10. I know, mm. isn't it stunning? It makes a beautiful toner onto blonde. Absolutely magical. And what I love about that is, you know, I think there's a difference between light and white, mm -hmm. right? Definitely. That white opacity, but again, that sparkle and that radiance on your cool neutral blondes, the SV at 10, which guys, we will take a look at later into all of the new shades that are being introduced. But it's, I, it's magical to me. Well, the level 10 lumens actually give tonality to blonde. Um, to very pale blondes, which is so wonderful. And just the way that the color melts is unbelievable. You know, that nuance of the turquoise against then just the spill of the soft yellows and the soft lavender. Well, I was really inspired by the trends this spring, which are a lot of the beautiful soft colors, and turquoise and yellows are certainly one of them. So. And now let me ask you, into the underneath, you chose to kind of go in more of like a charcoal like shade. Yes, I did, because I actually felt like it, um, it added some depth to her color, um, and it also gave her some definition and dimension. I think it's really, really special, and it just moves right into the back, and let's just get a great shot right at that little turquoise blend that melt together. The harmony of the shades, mm -hmm. I think, are really, really special. Well, and it shows that you can be subtle with a lumen. That's right. You know, uh, again, more of a beautiful reflective shade versus that it always doesn't have to be just a hardcore pure. Yeah, absolutely. And you can, when you do this kind of detail work, you can move it into different directions and get different shapes and shades from it. Well, and I think even if, let's say that we didn't want to go into so much of turquoise. Let's say you did want to, instead of actually seeing the, the blue-greens of turquoise, mm -hmm. if you wanted to in incorporate turquoise into a blonde overlay, Oh, absolutely. Yes. It wouldn't be difficult. Because then I think it's more about that saturation. It is. It you is. It's about how much of the tone do you want to be in there of your pure pigment. Right. Because, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes really do think, again, that it is about just pure. But also, if you needed to adjust, like if I know one of the questions that were being asked is if I have a client coming in for a retouch, right? They need it. Let's say it's a top chic retouch. Mm -hmm. And then they want to have maybe accents or shadows, lows of an Illumin piece. How would you approach it? Well, the nice thing about it is we can keep our base shade essentially always the same for That's maintenance. Right. So they don't have to come in and have a complete changeover of their detail every time. Exactly. They can come in for root touch-ups in between. And from within, as long as you're tapping in your base shade, mm -hmm. you can change whatever you want through the mid shaft and the ends. That's right. And just maximize the time. Like absolutely. if you were going to shadow with the color ons or even a low volume top chic. Yes, right? or absolutely. Necktie, yeah, think. it's very quick. Exactly. And I just, I love it, especially not only we talk about it in blonde coloring, but also whenever you're working into curly hair, whenever you want to make sure that you see all the delicious shine and shadow that the curly hair offers. Well, and Illumin does something unique for curly hair. It bundles the curls. That's right. And it gives you these wonderful, instead of the curls spreading out and separating, they mm -hmm. kind of hold together and they hold their shape and shine a lot more. Exactly. And you know, I know that again in the opener video, they got to hear about the Magnet Effect. 
mm -hmm. know, and how it all takes shape. And I just look at the durability of it all, that it's working in and it lives within the cortex. Well, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So utilizing it that way, it's not something that's just going to shadow off too quickly. It's no. going to always live. So as you said, you can just touch up and maybe just add adjustments of shadows yeah, as needed. Y y you really do not need to um, do the root to end every time. It does that's have that right. kind of durability. Exactly. And, you know, we look at what I love about the placement as well. You know, this angle that you had had here from more of the curved structure, I love that that just softly spills. You could just, in a traditional pattern every single day, adding your shadow detail there to accentuate a fringe line. You could do that on your traditional blonde and just put a blonde with a different tone in there just to add some dimension to your blondes. That's right. And just even just in the graphic shape of the side, mm -hmm. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's a spectacular combination and I'm sure that you all agree that Thank you are you in love with the blonde and oh. turquoise. I love <laughs> turquoise. <laughs> no, it's, it's really magical. And, you know, throughout the night, we do have, we have a lot more candy for you and a lot more of the different tricks. You know, because a lumen, again, utilizing as a full background, right? Introducing it along with Top Chic, mm -hmm. or of course, utilizing it as these different, uh, the express servicings. Yes, absolutely. With it has many, genius. many facets in the salon for use. That's perfect. So, what we're going to do, before we actually jump into our next canvas, which I believe is Ray, get those Twitter fingers ready. Ready? Twitter fingers. Okay. But with it, we are going to go through, in tweeting now, it's going to be hashtag go illumine, hashtag color inspiration. Go ahead, tweet along with us all night. And then we're going to take a little peek at what is Ray. So Michelle, we're here with our model Ray. And this is one of my favorite easy, quick, natural sectioning techniques that I love working throughout the interior, the points and the curves. And I really just love whenever you have a beautiful canvas, how can you use a lumen to make it even that much more spectacular? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to work into one of the new shades of an AN at 5 and also TQ at all. Starting from full root to ends, using the applicator comb, I'm going to just work through full saturation on the underneath sections because I want that dark, cool shadowing to take place. We're going to work through scalp to end and then we'll move into the middle in just a minute. So essentially, John, you're creating a lot of movement in her hair, but still sticking with the true, nice, natural-looking brown. Exactly. And utilizing what we have as a full sectioning, why, oh. why make it too complicated? Brilliant. So the next step is I'm taking down the middle sectioning through the interior. I'm applying the same deep background into the new zone, both from the top and into the back. But the hair painting light that's there, all I want to do is utilize that to our advantage. So here, I'm working the deep five-level background into the new zone. Into the middle and the ends, I'm going to work NA at 8 now as a blending point throughout the new zone into the length. So continuing with the comb, the application will get the shadow, will get all the contour of this beautiful long brunette, but give her a little bit of a, like a warm, cool control altogether. Fantastic. I can't wait to see this when it's finished. It's a lot of fun. So we're going to do this on both sides, and then we'll finish off into the lid. Okay, so we've completed section number one with the turquoise control and the AN5. Also, the blending from the AN5 into the NA8, but also now coming into the top lid. What I love about this technique is the movement, the, so the soft strength of the curve, and then the point direction that's going to move throughout the full parietal. So in the lid, let's deepen this up. We're going to come through with NB at 5 into a full scalp to end saturation, making sure that each zone processes in its own place. Saturation, as we know, Michelle, I think, and this is something that people need to know, is a lumen saturation is key. It's very key. You really have to have a lot of lumen almost taking away the grain look of the hair. Exactly. So that you're putting a jelly-like coating on it. That's right. You know, full saturation, it doesn't need to be into an overabundance of product, but make sure that you really have full control, exactly. right, and saturation from and scalp to end. And if the lumen dries, it dies. There you go. So we're going to continue into the top lid. Working it again from scalp to ends. We're going to process 
for 30 minutes, and I'm choosing actually no heat with this application. So I know you're going to be excited to see what's happening next. Yeah, I'm very excited. Now let's talk about Boom Chocolate. Absolute shine and luxury. Remember, it can be completely simple. Look at all the movement that it really creates. And I love it because a single process coloration done within three different design zones. I know, it's amazing. Look at the dimension it added to her beautiful hair. And you can see between the shadows that are moving through, again, the shine is absolutely amazing. As the hair would move, gorgeous. Luxury, scalp to end. Stunning. And between the depth that's building into the middle and then into the top, richening this as well, it utilizes the lights that are there and really just allows everything to give that perfect flash frame. You still get coloration over the lid because the hair was lighter then. And also then it just melts into the back. I'm just going to spin you around, Ray, just a little bit so we can see the full reverse. You know, Michelle, I just, I love utilizing quick applications like this because it doesn't always have to be just about another detail. I think details are amazing, but whenever you're looking at just color saturation and, it, and complete coverage, gorgeous. Well, and this really shows how practical Illumin is in the salon for your everyday clients. You can do it quickly. The application is fast. The, obviously, the results are amazing. Um, it's just something that you can use for everybody. That's right. You know, and I know that one of the questions that is in the whole chat log is that does Illumin lift? Yes, no, it does not lift. <laughs> it does not. No, Illumin takes to the level of color that you put on That's it. That's exactly right. And as we continue through, we're going to look at, with Illumin, it illuminates anything that we put it on. So yes. at that level, right, if it's going to be a high-level 910, if it's going to be a level into a 3-4, mm -hmm. that is what's going to give us that beautiful shade. Yes. So we can deposit down slightly, but I always look at depositing down into about a level. Right, yes, because difference. if you try to deposit too much with the lumen, you might get some hollowness, so you really want to maintain the richness. Exactly, as it would be with, I think, anything. Absolutely. You know, we want to make yeah. sure that you're building in that durability. Yeah. We always look at not only in placement, you can see from that quick contour of the curved sections of the triangle, you get that great spill, right? that great spill of color, and again, just that high reflection. So uh, you've done a design in a single process that really takes you up it's to 15 brilliant. minutes. And this shows you that you can have cool tones that are just so, I mean, this is what they all want. Exactly. So cool browns. And again, into the new shade ranging, which we're going to give you the full grid, and I know it's going to be in your hand soon. This is something that's really going to change your brunette world. And let's pull up the formulation grid of Ray. And this is something that it was really simple. And I know there were questions, and we'll get right back to it, of the formulations for Stephanie into our blonde. But you can see into the background, into the underneath base, into you, into the background. Sorry, I think that is off just a little bit. But through the, through the interior, the AN at 5, with one milliliter of TQ at all. And with that, just because if there is a little bit of extra warmth into the hair, there's a little bit of the extra warmth into the hair, what that's going to do is just give me that cool quality. And it's wonderful because it shows you what you can do with some of the pure pigments. That's other right. Other than using them as pure pigments. Exactly. And then through the middle, remember, we tapped in the AN at 5 with TQ into to the fusions of, we did 40 mils of Na at 8. Mm -hmm. So that natural ash at a level 8 gives me that kind of that cool, smoky luxury of tone, which is beautiful. And then into the underneath, 30 mils of the Nb at 5. So that dark contour is just going to allow everything, your light is only as strong as the dark, to be supported and just absolutely gorgeous. It is. It's stunning. It's so shiny and healthy looking. Beautiful. Ray, I'm in love. No, thank you. So with this, let's actually backtrack just a little bit. Let's go back to Stephanie's formulation grid. Because I think that not only were the shades special, but everyone really needs to know exactly what you had done in there. We spoke to it, and they got to see it applied. But let's talk just a little bit about what was done into you, because it was, it was special. She came in with a little bit of a three-ring yes. circus, right? Stephanie She's like was a band a, of brothers. Stephanie was special, and yes, there was some banding happening there. She had some roots, some natural regrowth. Then she had a band of pink, or pinkish, right. and then she had her blonde ends, so we first needed to clean her base and give her a, an even base. 
So with this, if we think about it, because that is our everyday salon life, mm -hmm. you know, the, the pinkish shade was not a lumen, mm -hmm. right? So it was something else that we, it's unfamiliar, I don't even know. But with it, we now introduced, we needed to clean up the canvas. And I think this is a special thing because you went through with the Silk Lift Strong at the root zone with 6%. Right, and then work that band. I just think that that's a special detail because I think a lot of times you would see that people would go in and try to just get it out just with one shot, it. but you're still going to have a band. Well, and, and you have to realize that if you're taking one formulation and putting it root to end, and it, you've got that banding effect, you're not going to have the same even results. So you have to treat each band differently. Exactly, and it's something that remember it illuminates anything you put it on. Yes, exactly. So if it looks off that way, it's about cleaning your canvas first. And mm -hmm. remember, there are many different ways, but that's with any product. If you were to apply colorants on top of already uh, uh, an off-level canvas. It's yes. going to be the same yes, way. Yes, absolutely. So this was our way of giving her a nice, even, blonde palette to start. Exactly. One thing that you had done in here as well is over top, and we did not show this, that you did at the shampoo area, the platinumizer, and you chose yes. to go in with 10 silver. I did. I, I use 10 silver a lot in my salon as a platinizer to prepare for any of my creative work and, and even just to tone most of my blondes because it's so quick. Yep. And it's really nice to have that in a salon, a really easy, quick tool that's very reliable. Exactly. And, you know, I just think to have that cool quality, mm -hmm. because if you're trying to create it, you don't want it to just neutralize and create a shade of brown. Well, and exactly. It's, it's that quick yeah. step. And when you're dealing with pastels, you really do need a very clear blonde to start. Exactly. And again, you know, light, not white. Yes. You know, yes. but we really want to make sure, because then the beautiful accents of the SV at 10 with TQ at all, your YY at all with the GB at 9, and then, of course, your clear with the SV at 10 and VV just to add your shadows. I think it's absolutely spectacular. Thank you, John. You know, and we'll take a look at even where was Stephanie before into the blonding service. And if you think about it, you see <laughs> where she was. So you can see that band of pink in there and her dark roots. And so. that natural, she teetered on that like low seven yes, that was yeah. really kind of even read a little bit more of a six. Yes, yeah, you know, absolutely. So cleaning that all up and now looking at her, ta duh, you know, absolutely magical. You know, as you see all the shades come together, once again, I, I love just the accents. You know, and I also love that you didn't just go into a straight YY. No, because really the creativity of what Illumin allows us to do, we can mix anything together. I encourage everybody to play. You get a white piece of paper and you mix some colors together and see. I mean, that's how you learn with Illumin, that's what right. you can do with it. So the endless possibilities once again. And again, I know they all agree that you can see the cool quality as well as you got to see the luxury of the brunette. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So with this, I know we have another little wonderful bit of hair candy for you. Why don't we take a look at Erin? So Michelle, we're here with Erin. And I think the first thing we need to do, silk lift bath. Absolutely done. Let's get to it. So we're back with Erin, and she's out of her silk lift wash and amazing sectioning. Tell me. Thank you, John. Well, what I've done is I want to create some movement in the length of her hair. Mm -hmm. So I've created three triangular sections. Yeah, I love it. So it's working from just the crown to right behind the occipital on both sides, and then you have it into the front. Absolutely. All right. So what's first? Well, first I'm going to apply my background foundation. So I'll begin at the front at the top. So everything that's not in the section, we're going to top shake. Everything that's not in a section, we are going to apply our top sheet background foundation. So working into the new zone first, and then you'll go back and saturate the length. Absolutely. All right, perfect. Okay, so Michelle, you started your design. Tell me about it. Absolutely, John. I'm doing diagonal forward slicing, and I'm alternating between silk lift decolorizing and my base color. All right. So you're actually going through, you're lightening up just a little bit more, but also you're tapping in your I'm tapping background in color. my background foundation color on my silk lift panels. So this application right now is just a, uh, a slice of my background foundation. Okay, to break the rotation. To break the rotation, exactly, because what I want to do is create a soft diffusion of the detail as opposed to being too stark or too obvious. Right, which we know is going to be more salon wearable, you know, yes. and not everyone needs just a solid block of color. No, absolutely, John. This is going to be something that's very consumer friendly. Yeah, and really sophisticated. Very sophisticated. So your next slice then... So my next slice will be of my Silk Lift decolorizer. Okay. 
And you're working this the full way within that triangular section? I'm working this the full way through the triangular section. So I'll probably end up doing two sections of my slices in order to fit the width of them all in. So I'm tapping in my background foundation first. Mm -hmm. Lovely. And then I'm applying my silk lift. Right through to the ends. And then I'm just going to take my foundation brush and I'm just going to blend that background foundation in to diffuse that. So it has harmony. Exactly. So Lovely. it gets a nicer blend. All right. So you're going to do this on both sides and then the top lid? On both sides and then the top lid. Thank All you, right. John. I can't wait to see the details. Okay, so we're back with Erin, and it's time to design. I see you have a I little know, overlay wait. on the background color. Yes, yeah, yeah, we've created an overlay to give it a beautiful glow. Quick glaze, brilliant. And I remember you did the colorizing in a diagonal forward, forward. section. So now we're actually going to be doing the reverse, John. We're going to be doing diagonal back. Awesome. And the reason we're doing that is because it's going to cross all of my lightened sections Fabulous. and create, as you said, a really beautiful pixelization of her color. Lovely. All right, well, let's have at it. What are we going to do? So I'm first going to begin with the same color that I've used to glaze the rest of her hair, which is going to draw them in and make it connect to the rest of her hair. Okay, it's like that common thread, right? It's a common thread, and it gives it a much more consumer ability. Because you had done background in between each of your decolorized slices. Absolutely. So it's going to tie them all in together and make it feel like one head of hair as opposed to different sections of colored sure. hair. Sure. And then into, are you going to do this as a compact throughout, or...? Um, uh, yes, actually, John, I am going to be doing it as a compact foil. Let's just start on the bottom. That's fine. I think that working its way through, you know, really easy, because I love to take that, and that's really just do a soft flip, and that's the nice thing about working with papers versus... Absolutely, you can do that. The papers are so much easier to work with because the lumen adheres to them so much better. So now you're integrating... Now I'm integrating... Some, some of our detail shades. color, yes. So I'm actually going to be working with um, a, a yellow, and I'm be working with a bit of a rosy color. So I want to uh, blend that through so the three melt together. So now introducing more of a rose, a rosé. Yes, this is a very, it's a very deep rosé. Well, you know, because I love your light is only as strong as the dark that sits beside it. So this is delicious. Exactly. Delicious. It's actually going to make it feel, um, it's, it's going to make the, the lighter colors pop. Perfect. And now, is there a third slice as well? Yes, and then my third slice, John, is actually one of my favorite go-to colors that I'm quite well known for is yellow. I love mm. mixing yellows. A little YY, if little you A little YY. You wouldn't be able to tell from my own hair that I actually like YY, but I do. <laughs> hey, I mean, who doesn't love a YY? Why not? Why not? So great. So we have background and then rosé. And now, wait now for we're it. Putting, wait for it. We're putting our YY on. And I've decided to make a little bit more of a muted YY because I didn't want it to be, um, you know, the magic marker YY. Sure, not so electric. Not so electric, I yes. always say that there is a difference between animated and sophisticated Absolutely. whenever we're working with pure shades. Absolutely. And the pure shades have their place, That's but right. um, they, they make a wonderful tool to accent other colors. Exactly, and utilizing them as the true mix as they are. Exactly. Great. All right, so now, continuing, you're going to do this on both sides. Is it the same rotation? It's the, the same rotation on both sides, John. the rosé and then into the yellow. Absolutely. All right, well, I'm going to let you have at it, and then we'll see it all come together. Great, thank you. Okay, so you've started to design now the top lid. Absolutely, John. So what I'm doing is I'm working backwards, okay. and I'm weaving through, but a fairly chunky weave because, again, that pixelation we're going for here, sure. I don't want to have just the, the, the blonde sitting as chunks. Yeah. I want it to be very blended. Yeah. All right. So let's see it. So I've already done one, With which the was my background foundation glaze, and now I'm applying my yellow formula. Yes. Okay. And Erin, love, just put your head down just a little bit. There we go. And I'm going to make sure that I put a little bit of my base. Just the tap. To just to tap again. in Great. and turn the brush sideways okay. to slightly blend it. Yeah. So 
So another zigzag. Another zigzag. Now this one is going to be again my background foundation. Okay. So scalp to end. From scalp to end. And then after this one, I'm going to be doing one more of my yellow, but I want to keep this one quite fine because I'm not actually adding a lot of the yellow. I'm just adding a very slight amount. Lovely. And then what happens to the rest of the front section? So the rest of the front section, John, I'm actually going to be adding a deep rose Bordeaux. Okay, lovely. And you're going to do that to the entire front section? I'm going to do that to the entire front section. All right, perfect. Well, I'm going to let you have it at it, finish up the technique, and then you'll get to see how it all looks. Thank you, John. I know you're excited, but wait, wait for it, and boom. Absolute luxury. Michelle, I'm in love. Like each, just, it, it, I can't even stand it. It keeps getting better and better. Absolute sophistication. Well, it's just, and I mean, the aluminum reds and coppers, they're just so beautiful. I mean, how can you, how can you imagine colors so vivid? It's absolutely stunning. Well, it's so special because, you know, what I love, and you think about this, often you always see, it's, you know, I joke, the ketchup and mustard, like combinations mm -hmm. into the red world. And by just that little flirt, right, of the yellow bit, what makes it even better is the Merlots that you had added into the interior. Well, and the it, it, it does, it gives it a base. It gives it a beautiful base. Because as it moves, you had sort of the zigzag softening, right, of just the soft yellow. Mm -hmm. And then just intertwining that background overlay that you put on the top chic, right, throughout, it just, it melts together absolutely well, and what's, Magical. what's so nice about creative placement like this is no matter how she wants to move her hair, if she decides she's going to bring her bangs off to a side, she can do that and she can actually get a very unique look. Because now suddenly she's bringing out the yellow in her hair, so it's got so much you can do with it. I just, I, I love to have a little splash of color hidden and then have it just kind of pop out. Well, sure, because it's, a, it's that flirtatious kind of pixelation. Right, yes. again, that, you know, the color moves, it's always radiant. And, you know, with the lumen, it allows you to do that. But I just, I think in color, it should be, you know, what is, what is, it's, it's more than just, you know, ketchup and mustard or chocolate and vanilla. Mm -hmm. It is something that is just magical. And as we look into the sides, I just think the length and the dream of it is gorgeous. Going into the whole shatter of the shape, right, it just gives a perfect melting. And tell me a little bit one more time about the trick that you had done within the side panels. Well, it's, it's something I've always done in my work in that um, I like color to melt together. Yes. I don't really like to see the separations as much. So I will do my detailed decolorizing mm -hmm. with a um, horizontal slice or a vertical slice, but then when I do the detail color application afterwards, I'll actually reverse the direction of my slicing, essentially cutting across all the uh, decolorized lines I've just done, which gives you a much more pixelated, melted look of your color. It's really, really magical. And, you know, whenever I look at that, I love that it's, it wasn't a labor-intensive factor. You really built in your decolorizer and your background, and then you added, you did a creative... Um, adjustment in your details. Yeah, and it's, it's really, um, you can do that with color in almost any way. I will actually do that with my blondes. Sure. Um, blondes who want dimension, I can actually go in and cross section them and add toning in different dimensions and it does the same thing because if you use um, a light alumin tone That's right. and you go across section, alumin is going to pick up on the level of the color of, of the, what you've put it on. So if you yes. put it on a level six, it's going to tone that level six to the alumin tone. But if you put it on the next section has a bit of a, a level 10 in it, suddenly you're picking up lighter. So that's where you get that blend. Yeah, beautiful. And just even as I pull that back, you know, I mean, just the combination, the spill together, I just think is absolutely 
Beautiful. Between, and I know we're going to look at the formulations, but let's focus on that for a second. Into saturation, right? I always think that as we're trying to maybe dilute a shade or we're trying to create something else, it's, I think there are other options than clear. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And you can actually dilute your Illumin Pure Pigments with any of the Illumin shades, right. depending on what level of darkness you're looking for. But the new level 10s are brilliant, the level 9s, the level 8. I mix YY at all, YY at all quite often with uh, a level 8 Illumin, just because I want to give it a softer yellow tone, yes. be a bit more of a beigey yellow. Exactly. You know, and I think that into a lot of people do have the questions. It's not just about clear, because that, and that's fine if you're mm -hmm. trying to create just a really almost innocent pastel, but by gaining the depth that you were talking about, mm -hmm. by incorporating the, the level, to it within the same tonal family Absolutely. of what you're saturating, it's, it's perfect. And it does, it gives us almost a bit more of a natural looking yes. pigment to, to it, the tone. And it, kind of, it acts sort of almost as a fill for that, that diluted pure to sit on. It really does, it so really does. You get depth to your color then. Exactly. You know, and I know all of the canvases as we've decolorized, we went through with prepare, mm -hmm. right? And I know prepare, it really does just balance out what is the environment that your lumen is going to sit on, right? So a lot of people ask, is essential. Well, I think whenever you have decolorized panels, of course, you know, because I want to have that durability built in. Well, because it gives you, um, it gives you even application exactly. of the lumen and it adheres to the hair evenly and prepares such a necessary tool if you're doing that. And such a quick application. You blow dry and then you go into oh, the overlay. Yes, absolutely. And again, just the overlay into the red, like we talked about into the balancing or the express toning with the blondes. But Aaron, I'm just going to have you head down just a little bit. If you look at the magic of this red, right? I know that you had the top chic there. And let's take a look at the formula grid actually so we can see. So here you went through, and we did a little bit of a pre work. We did a little pre-work with a silk lift bath, and that was done. I know a lot of people have those questions. It's at the shampoo bar, right? It's done on damp hair, and you really just work the middle shaft and the ends because Erin's pigment was a little bit, a little dusty or darker. Yeah, than. and we, we just needed to clean her palette. Exactly, without making it. We didn't need to go through a system color remover because no. we didn't need to take her out of the red family. No. Just take some of the dust off. Yeah, it was a bit matte looking. So. Exactly, completely opaque. And then the background, I love it. Adjust with the 7KG and 6% and then the 7KR. And then with the details again, you had already lightened. And what I love is that you went in with the gentle. Right, you went in with, uh, into your details, and it was something that it just allows us to clean up, right? If you need to go in gentle, strong. Well, and if, if I have a choice, I will choose gentle, especially when I'm working with long hair, sure. because it's, it's really, I mean, it's non ammonia lightener. Yes, it's exactly. so brilliant. But um, it really wasn't necessary for her hair, John, because we weren't taking her down to a level 10. Right. And, but then into your details between the Merlot, the BR at 6, with the 3 mils of PK at all, and then the GK at all and KK combination equal, and then we have the GB9 with the YY. It really does allow us to just get just get an amazing, amazing application and a great way to showcase the mixture Absolutely, of and the maintenance of her hair is very simple. She can come in for her root color, which is her base, and uh, the Illumin work doesn't have to be done every time to That's maintain right. this look for her. So in her retouching, she's now out four to six. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Or even three to six. You exactly. touch up in the top chic, and then if you need it, just, I mean, you could do a quick overlay, but it won't be necessary. Exactly. And I know some people are curious, John, as to, you know, how you charge for Illumin. Yes. Well, in our salon, we charge 20% more yes. for Illumin Agreed. than we do for our regular color services. So, of course, the price would depend on the salons that you're in. But um, what we do is we have a Lumen add-on services, and they are 20% more than what the color would be. That's right. And you are creating the most mm -hmm. premium service for them. And the clients, I can tell you, the clients who have a Lumen, yes, right. they don't care. They will pay the extra. They love the color, and they will come back the next time and say, whatever you did, do it again. Exactly. And, and even as we said it, that sometimes you may have to add a new accent to it, but you won't even find that you always have to. No, you don't, you don't have to. Um, I have a client who's blonde, and she loves to play. She loves cotton candy, sure. bubble gum colors, and she's a <laughs> teacher, and she just loves to be experimental. Sure. Um, sometimes we have actually done her root touch-ups two, three times before we've even had to touch her Illumin colors because they last so well. Right. You know, and let's take a look too. You know, I just looking again at where did Erin start. It's something that it's, it's lovely that it's really, it did take that quick brown off and now she really is just great. There's just no, there's just no comparison. Exactly. You know, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So with this, 
what we're going to do is I want to chat just a little bit, Michelle, before we take it into the next step. What are some things, I mean, tell me a little bit about you, period. I know that I had told you that, you know, that you really are a winning colorist, right? Successful business owner. And, you know, just tell me some of the things that make up you. Oh, thank you, John. No, well, it's, it's honestly, that's, I, I've you're, been, that's why you're my guest. Aha, uh -huh, thank you, John. Well, I've been 30 years as a stylist, 30-plus years now. Um, I've actually been using Goldwell products for 27 years. Fabulous. And um, I did work in my 20s as a GTA for Goldwell. Okay. And, and then I went on to start my own business. So I've sure. had my salon for about 15 years now. And um, in the last three years, I've joined Goldwell as one of their guest artists. Exactly. And I know it, it created such great success. And tell us a little bit more because, you know, the area that your salon and your spa lives, where is that? We're out in the burbs. Um, <laughs> we are. Perfect. We're about 30 minutes outside of Vancouver, Canada, uh, in a little town called Langley. It's not so little anymore. It's growing. But um, that was, I made my home there. That's right. Um, so I decided that's where I was going to make my salon. And we started off uh, fifth, almost 50 years ago now I had three stylists and a receptionist and we've grown to a staff of 38. It's brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And but even I know that as Color Zoom, right? I know as the Canadian finalist, right? I mean tell me about that just a little bit. Oh, Color Zoom has been amazing. I've been fortunate enough to go three times to represent Canada. Three times, not one, not two. Um, my first was I went to Vegas um, and then I did uh, Paris and then skipped a year and then I was London last year and it was it's such an amazing experience. I, I, I can't say enough about Color Zoom and how um, rewarding it is and challenging and how much I've learned from the process. Well, and I just, I know we have, we had created the slide special about uh, all the, the winnings, you know, and I know that, you know, Demetrius and I had just in the last first segments of our web series this year talked about Color Zoom and just about what is competition. And I know your entries of not only Color Zoom, but the Contessas and also the Canadian Mirror. And, you know, tell me a little bit about that. Well, um, Contessa, actually, I, I didn't go in to win anything when I first started. Exactly. I was a stylist in the salon like everybody else, was feeling a little bit bored with myself, and I wanted to challenge myself. So I That's right. found a wonderful photographer, and we did a photo shoot. And then when we were done, we looked at the pictures and went, hmm, those are pretty good. This could work. Let's, let's <laughs> see what happens. So um, when I first got my call that I was a Contessa semifinalist, I cried. Um, it's when, exciting. And then when I got a call to say I was a finalist, and I was going to Toronto for the awards night, um, in my mind, that was the highlight. I thought, I don't sure. need anything else. I'm good. And then we uh, went to Toronto. And when they actually announced the winners, um, I started clapping because I thought that somebody else won. I just assumed. Right. And it it was, wasn't even uh, in your head. It was actually um, my grown daughter was with me, and she started hitting me on the leg. And she said, Mom, get up. It's you. And it took, <laughs> it took me a minute. I actually had to have my photographer walk up with me because I couldn't walk. So... You know, I just, I really, I do applaud you because I look at whenever you are working, it's if you're competing, if you're working within your studios, your salons every single day, it's always pushing yourself, right? As soon as you gain perfection, start over. Well, so there's always I think more I'm room. a testament to anybody can do this. Yeah. I mean, sure. after doing hair this many years, I was 26 years of hairdressing sure. before I entered my first competition. It's amazing. Um, so I think anybody can do it. You can transform whatever your dreams are, and, and Zoom is certainly one I Exactly. I highly recommend everyone to do it. It's just such an amazing experience. It's really, it's spectacular, and it's always something special. And what I love most is I always love unique color combinations, and I love the fact that really you take even what I, would, I wouldn't even expect. So that's, it's incredible, because if you don't, know about her really google her right <laughs> there is so much more she's being very modest but it's amazing absolutely you, amazing so you know with this i know tonight we are going to continue just a little bit i know we're um get the twitter fingers ready once again we're ready for your questions exactly always throw in those questions but into the next we're tweeting now at john simpson hashtag saturation hashtag amazing shine right so spread the word guys i know we're having fun and let's take a look to you and so I know we've talked about the color servicing that we have along with this, but also what are some of the, some of the grids? What are the new shades and the service options? You know, if we can just pull those up, that would be super because I want these guys to be able to see, you know, what are the, what are the new techniques and also what are the services? We've talked about the tone-on-tone -tone color service, of course, and mm -hmm. that would be our brunette model ray, right? And also into it as well, I mean, you're always giving 
this, this, perfect, this perfect shading. You know, now I think onto the damp hair with the blonde world. I know, isn't that brilliant? You know, at, at some point, and those of us that have been Illumin users for a long time knew that you didn't want to apply it to damp hair. But now everything has changed. How does it even change a little bit, though, well, I mean, into what is the Illumin technology? Well, the Illumin technology has come so far over the years because it's really, the, the way it stays in the hair now is just brilliant. Um, you know, the shine, the fact that it actually fills in all the spaces of the hair. That's right. Um, and essentially repairs what's there and makes it hot, solid and shiny and whole. Yes. And, you know, what I love, too, is you're applying it at the shampoo bar or, of course, you know, at the, at the color bar station. Mm -hmm. And it's really on towel-dried hair. And yes. it's not damp hair. It's no, towel-dried towel hair. hair. Yeah. And you're gonna, you can process that even into 10 minutes and have the most amazing shine and yeah. durability. And I highly encourage everyone to start toning at the sink doing it that way. It's exactly. Amazing. It really changes up the work completely. You know, and then we look in gray, the gray reduction services as well, and some of the new shades that we're going through. What I want to take a look at, too, is into the Illumin gray reduction. Right, we have this now because into some of the combinations between what is your warm, your neutral, and your cool, with combinations of the NG at 6 and AN at 5, right? The NG at 6 with AB at 6, mm -hmm. and then NB at 4 with BM. At six, a beige matte, gorgeous. I am so excited about those shades because it's really opened a lot more doors for us with Illumin. Truly. And it's even now, you know, with some of the shades, you can see that into the light family, we have the NA at 8, SB at 10, the silver beige, and also the silver violet at 10. And the natural beige at 10, I just, it's marshmallow luxury to it's me. It's beautiful. I, I can't imagine that I won't have blondes that I will want to tone those with. Oh, exactly, if not all of them. And also then we look at the bright family, BM at 6, our deeps AN at 5, which you got to see a little taste oh, on Ray. Oh, I know. And then, of course, the pure, the turquoise. I think... TQ at all has really revolutionized our palettes. Exactly. And, you know, one thing, let's take a look to you, you know, into the whole, into the technical assortment of it all, into the technical assortment of it all, what I want to see is into the manual, we can go between what are the lights, right, what are the light families into the palettes, and we've been, we've been talking about a little bit at that level. Mm -hmm. So they can see between levels two to level 10, the recommended shades to utilize at, that, at the service level, mm -hmm. and also what the effect is going to be. And it makes it so simple to use, because you know if you put KB at 7 on a level 8, you can see what you're going to get. Exactly. Now moving into the brights and then the deeps, right? you have the luxury of the warm and cool sophistication, which I just think is magical. You know, and I know the next is what everyone craves, boom, that's, all of the pures. That's where we play. We do. But remember, as we've shown them tonight, what I love, Michelle, again, is I mean, anyone can grab at whatever level. You could grab PK at all, and that's great. Mm -hmm. But if you want to actually soften it, create more of a soft pastel pink of a blonding, mm -hmm. right? And not to be radiant pink, but to do a quick PK and dilution, maybe even with SV at 10. Oh, it'd be beautiful. Absolutely luxurious. Yeah. So remember, there are always so many options. So into the user guide of it, it is really, really incredible. So... Are you having fun? I'm having lots of fun. Too. Good. Me too. You know, in a couple of words, tell me, what would it be? I know we're talking about the success in salons, but what does it take to really be an award-winning colorist? Um, well, well, my personal experience has been um, I began it wanting to not create a photo that would just be specifically for a hair magazine. Yes. I wanted to create work that I could take and put in the cover of Vogue or that's right. in Cosmopolitan magazine and that the general public would look at it and say that's beautiful. Sure. So that was my approach to it. Um, I think the reason my photos have been so well received is because I think number one, I just wanted to make beautiful hair and I did it for me. Yes. Um, and that was very important. And I also want everyone to remember when you're doing your photographic work, um, be careful of how much texture you do. Um, I call it texture on purpose. That's right. Um, you don't want right. to just randomly create texture in hair where it doesn't have a purpose. And especially if you're doing for something like Zoom, which you're showing hair color. Right. Hair color shows very well when it's very smooth. And you're taking a three-dimensional woman and you're exactly. creating a two-dimensional image. So we think about your perimeters. Mm -hmm. Think about your lines and where they sit. Because when That's you're right. looking at the photo, the perimeter is extremely important. Exactly. And you don't want to overcomplicate it. You don't want to overcomplicate it. You don't need too much wardrobe, too much makeup, too much accessories. It becomes smothered then and taken away. Well, and when you look at the photo, the first thing you should see is hair. That's right. You shouldn't see anything but that. And this is even something that I know 
you have a program about this, don't you? I do. I teach at the Vancouver and the Toronto Academies. I'm teaching this this uh, April uh, 7th, 8th, and 9th at the Vancouver Academy and the following weekend in Toronto. And it's your Zoom class, which is three days. The first day is theory and what is Zoom and what yeah. it takes to make a beautiful winning photo. Beautiful. The second day is model prep, so you bring your model mm -hmm. and we assist you in prep. And then the third day is your shoot, so you actually get your Zoom entry from it. And yeah. it's uh, a very successful program. I'm very excited about and it. And it just really, I think, just into understanding what is the art of competition coloring. Well, and we, we, we bring it down. We break it down. We break it down in a way that it's not overwhelming. Sure, for sure. You know, and you know, speaking into academies, I know it's something to translate. It's always to keep you inspired. You know, mm -hmm. I'm going to just share a little bit of what's coming up within the U.S. academies between Baltimore and also into Santa Monica. And if you see this, both into in the academies at Baltimore, you see the perfect finish, um, artistic intelligence technique with, with yours truly. And with <laughs> that, it allows us to really take what are everyday obstacles and translate multiple looks. It takes you through five different looks. We're us utilizing one canvas and changing it from high degrees each time. Also throughout, you can see the full grid um, artistic intelligence editorial blonde spectrum illuminate, um, which it, it takes it even further. If, yes. uh, if you guys really want to learn about Illumin, it is there for you. So there's another one. I know with Color Inspiration, what is really special, this is something coming up. And Inspiration, the Inspiration series that is coming up is Inspiration LAX, and that's May 4th through 5th. And this is something, again, that I really wanted to take Color Inspiration and take them further. I love to have a person be excited for what is their creativity, and also understanding what are the elements of design, what is art. It's a program unlike any other that just gives us an amazing thing. There's also Inspiration NYC. But here, this is something that coming up, you can definitely check out. You can go to the goldwellnorthamerica.com site. Check it out for uh, Inspiration LAX. All right? You know, coming up a little bit further than to you is we have our next webcast, and that's coming up into April, where my special guests are the Carlton team. And the Carlton team are going to show us what is their interpre interpretation of spring summer hair. It's an amazing, amazing team to work with, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to take us into not only great techniques that we utilize every single day, but it's taking us into what is their interpretation, not only from runway, but what is really real life. So I think that is really something special. And you know, I look at it. Hello, ladies. Lovely. Michelle, they're absolutely spectacular. Yeah, our models were wonderful. And I think they all look beautiful. They really do. Bravo. And you know, Michelle, before we wrap up, you know, what are some words if you had to uh, really encourage everyone to be inspired, not only within utilizing a lumen, but also into canvases they do every single day? Any words of wisdom? I think um, just, you know what, start out playing with it. Start out practicing with it. Sure. Um, get to know the product. Get to know what it does. As it's know. not to be scary. And it's not to be scary. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, when we first had a lumen offered to us, we really, over the years, we've evolved and realized what an essential part of our color tool it has become. That's exactly right. And, you know, again, as I, we opened the actual segment, is it's not that a lumen has changed. A lumen, you see the packaging is a little bit different. You know, it's another few sexy images. Illumin has now it's taken us into something that's already brilliant and didn't need to be fixed. It's only given us more possibilities between the shade spectrum that we have as well as the way that we use it every single day, All right, which is awesome. So, Michelle, thank you thank so, you again, so much. Thank you again, John. It was Lovelies, lovely. Lovelies, gorge. Gorgeous, thank you. And to all of you watching, thank you so much. You know, really, I always want to give you color inspiration, but ultimately, you are our inspiration. So I love to stay dedicated to you. And again, I did say it just a little bit ago, you know, we really want through color inspiration for you to strive for color perfection. And as soon as you obtain perfection in your work, start over. So there's always room <laughs> to gain more. Guys, it's an absolute pleasure. I'll see you in April. Stay tuned. Make sure keep your Twitter fingers going. All right, and then we'll definitely chat soon, and I'll see you then, if not before. Bye, everyone.